I have some clients who, and have over the years had, had clients like everybody who, who want to talk about everything, who want to say, well, this happened and then this happened and then this happened and which is, which is really important. Um, and yet they already know that this happened and this happened and this happened. Uh, so it can sometimes get into kind of a cycle of what's already known. Whereas if you're jumping into what's happening now, that's kind of unknown what's happening now. So in process work, we're interested in what we know and also what we don't know and what we're intending to do and also what's happening unintentionally. What we're the agent of and also where we're something else is the agent of something. And so uh, that's, that, that's where things get kind of exciting. Um, hello and welcome. My name is Vincent Ryan and I'm a psychotherapist based in Cork in Ireland. And uh, I'm here today with Lane um, Arie. Uh, Lane is a process work trainer, a, a senior trainer in process work based in the San Francisco Bay Area. And uh, today's interview is part of a series of interviews with practitioners of experiential ways of working with people, groups, uh, couples and communities, which I believe Lane works with all these um, these clients. So um, Lane uh, is um, is somebody that we're very welcome, very glad to have here, and you're very welcome today, Lane. Thanks so much, Vincent. Really nice Thanks to for meet you. Yeah, to chatting yeah. about this juicy stuff. Yeah, indeed. Okay, so let's get into it. So the first question I'd like to ask you, Lane, is: so you work, you you you, you specialize in uh, process work, and um, do you consider this to be an experiential uh, form of therapy and, and how is the exper experiential? Yeah, it's definitely an experiential form of therapy in that whatever we're working with is what we're experiencing right now. So even if we're working on the past, when somebody's talking about what happened in the past, if they're talking about difficult family stuff in the past, or if they're talking about some great peak experience they had in the past, we're always experiencing that in the moment as well, right? I'm, I'm talking about, oh, my mother, uh, and I'm, uh, I have that feeling in my body and my face is doing that. So it's always what we're experiencing right now in addition to what we're talking about. Or if I'm thinking about, oh yeah, I wish I could go to Hawaii. Oh, vacation, like Hawaii is present in the moment. Uh, so, uh, and so we're working with all kinds of experience. We're working with, if I'm imagining something, if I'm hearing something, if there's a tone of my voice, if I'm moving, if my body's feeling something, if, if I'm working with my partner, am I turned toward my partner? Am I turned away from my partner as we're talking? So all of these things are happening in the moment, in the experience. And, and, uh, and then we also work with all kinds of experience. So working, you know, with whatever childhood trauma or or relationship issues or whatever, but also we work with uh, physical symptoms and stuff like that. If somebody is in the middle of dealing with cancer, if somebody has, has a terrible migraine headache, that that is also what we're working on. Um, because in process work, we the experience is, is, is that the body is also dreaming. We dream at night, right? We go to bed, we dream. Uh, but Jung said that, the, that we're always dreaming, actually. And, and Arnie Mendel, I, I should say, Arnie Mendel is my mentor, has been my mentor for many, many years. 
and uh, he's the man who developed process work also together with his wife Amy Mandel and uh, and he was originally a Jungian analyst and a trainer at the Jung Institute in Zurich uh, and so he developed process work out of that and so that's one of our roots is 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 Jungian psychology and Jung said that we're always dreaming Jung said that a dream so I, I'm jumping right in I hope that's okay. okay Jung said that a dream is a compensation for a one-sidedness so if I'm one-sided in this way the dream is showing me something to compensate that or balance me because it's trying to help lead us toward our wholeness. So, but he also said we're always dreaming and process work kind of, or Arnie Mandel kind of took that and ran with it. And how are we always dreaming? Oh yes, what's happening in my body is also a dream. Oh, what's happening between us in the moment, the movements I'm making, the words that I'm unconsciously choosing, my sentence structure, is also part of the dreaming process in the moment. So we're always working with that dreaming process that's happening. Yeah, wow, wonderful. Um, there's a lot of threads in there that um, I, I'm going to hopefully pick up along the way. So Lane, could you maybe help us understand a bit about your own journey in, in kind of really going in this direction to work in this way with process work and this, these different layers of experience? How, how did that come about for you? Uh, well, like a lot of people who go into therapy, I needed a lot of work. <laughs> I, I was, I was a piece brother. of work. <laughs> I was a piece of work myself, and uh, and so uh, I went to my first workshop with Arnie Mandel um, in 1984. So it's been a while, um, and then in 1985 I moved to Zurich to study with him, um, and. Uh, so, yeah, that 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 that's how I that's how I got into it. I was a musician before that. I was a singer and and uh, trying to trying to make it as a singer. And uh, but what was happening in inside of me was was uh, <laughs> not so fun. So I I actually went there more to help myself but then I got so excited and um, and moved by what I was learning that I just stayed and I've been there ever since or not in Zurich but in process work and I'm wondering when you began to explore this way of working and um, what did you find that sort of effective about it for you as you were experiencing that um, Wow so much uh, I mean, you say effective, but maybe I'll say first affecting, mm -hmm. like uh, it was this sense that um, whatever was happening in me, Arnie said yes to, which was very different than how I grew up, right? Uh, you know, in, in, in my family, very often what was happening with me was not okay. You know, it was, so I internalized then those voices as so many of us do. I shouldn't be this way. I shouldn't be that way. I shouldn't have this feeling. I shouldn't be sad. I shouldn't whatever. Um, and Arnie was just like, yeah, wow. Let's, let's say yes to everything. And, um, and, uh, yeah, so that was kind of a revolutionary thing for me to be able to uh, learn to, oh, something's happening in my body. How do we follow that rather than say no to it, rather than take drugs to get rid of it, rather than medicate myself with whatever? Uh, and uh, so that, that, that was kind of a radical departure for me and really healing. Yeah, well, 
yeah, I have to ask you next. I mean, were there other types of counseling or therapy that you tried before that before it was was the the process work the first type of work that you did in in that line? No, I I, I was doing other kinds of therapy uh, as a client. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, before and uh, and I I worked for a while with a guy at the Jung Institute in San Francisco. I was living in San Francisco at the time, um, and uh, yeah, I, I I've always been really interested in Jung since college, um, and uh, but uh, yeah, that that. I mean, it was, it was, it was good. I got a lot out of that, but, um, but this, this work that was more experiential actually, uh, really, really grabbed me in a different way. So it was actually the experiential nature of the, the work you were doing with Arnie Mandel and so on. That was what was really helping. That was how it was affecting you in a, in a positive way then. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, I, I did my very first workshop with Arnie. I, I don't know, we're talking about all the history for a long time, but I did my very first workshop with Arnie and, and, uh, and I had such an amazing experience working in the middle with him. Uh, and, uh, and I talked to him about my, my struggles with my, with my therapist at the, at the Jung Institute. And he said, well, why don't you ask him if he'll just wrestle with you um, and uh, tell him that you got something with him and that you want to wrestle. And, and so I said, okay, great. You know, I was like a young guy, 26. And, uh, and so I went there and I said, let's wrestle. And I really feel bad for the guy, you know, because it, it wasn't really fair. Um, because he's like, well, that's not my mode of working. And I said, okay, I guess I'm done. Yeah. And uh, anyway, now I'm, I'm not sure with how I would respond if somebody said, well, I, I, I would probably wrestle them, but I, I got back problems these days. But um, yeah, I get the impression though, there was something about that, that suggestion from Arnie Mandel that you liked though. That kind of yeah, it was, sorry yes it was yes it was just about like let's engage with what's actually happening right now mm. let's let's in addition to talking about all of all of the other stuff in addition to talking it through let's also be here present with what is happening mm. um so the wrestling that 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 was just whatever a a, a, a funny suggestion from him but um but the but the essence of it is let's be present with what's happening and work with that yeah and it's interesting that phrase you used um talking about versus what's happening right now let's be what, with what's happening right now is something that does come up a bit when we talk, think about experiential psychotherapy that sometimes maybe we can talk about something and that's a form of experience arguably but then there's something about really like something very immediate about either wrestling, you know, literally or, or, or relationally with what's happening in the moment, right? That's a kind of a, there's a kind of a, there's a di distinction there almost to be made. That, that's right. You know, I have, I have some clients who, and have over the years had, had clients like everybody who, who want to talk about everything who want to say well this happened and then this happened and then this happened and which is which is really important um and yet they already know that this happened and this happened and this happened uh so it can sometimes get into kind of a cycle of what's already known whereas if you're jumping into what's happening now, that's kind of unknown, what's happening now. So in process work, we're interested in what we know and also what we don't know and what we're intending to do and also what's happening unintentionally. What we're the agent of and also where we're something else is the agent 
of something. And so uh, that's, that, that's where things get kind of exciting. Yeah, yeah. So that kind of brings me on to the next question, which is, I was going to ask you a question, but I'm actually going to ask you a different one. And just now I'm sort of thinking on, 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 the, on, the, on the, off the hoof, so to speak. Could you help us kind of get a sense or a flavor of, of how you work with somebody, um, Lane? Like what when we talk about working in the here and now, working with what's happening, what comes to mind for you and how, how you work with, with somebody? So I'm thinking in a couple of different directions. So uh, I'm thinking about this client of mine uh, who has a lot of anxiety. And she experiences that very viscerally in her body. Um, and she, uh, you know, there's a lot of kind of vibration. There's a lot of kind of temperature changes, uh, you know, and this is in addition to all of the things that she's thinking about uh, and and as very often happens what she's thinking about feeds what's happening in the body and what's happening in the body feeds what she's thinking about so it's kind of this vicious cycle happening um and so i'm just remembering this one time where uh we were working on it and 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 her body was vibrating a lot and so I asked her if she would feel comfortable with letting that vibration happen. And uh, that time she was. And so she just allowed that vibration to happen. First, it was like something very small, um, but then she noticed it. I said, where else do you notice it? And she said, oh, I'm noticing it also in my elbow. So then the elbow started to move. And then I said, well, would you mind standing up to see what else wants to move. And so we both stood up and she started to kind of do this kind of, and it was like this. And as you saw with my hands, so, so, so one of the things we do in process work is we notice what's happening. And then we say, okay, let that happen more. Right? So like I said, there's something happening unintentionally, the vibration. And then we say, let that happen more. So now that's happening more intentionally, right? But then this is happening too. So there's the next unintentional thing and we're following then the next unintentional thing. And then, and then it started to kind of go like that a little bit, but then she would go back here. So I said, oh, I notice your, your arms also going out some. And ooh, oh yeah. Right. And so she started to do that some more, but it always stopped there. So I was noticing that. So I said, would you mind if I put my hands where your hands are stopping? And she said, okay, that's fine. And I actually got behind her. I asked her if that was okay. And where she went like that, it was actually her arms that were stopping. So I stopped her like that. And she felt <clears throat> mad when I did that, that she's being stopped. So I said, okay, just follow that. And so she, <clears throat> and she, and she felt like she was kind of in a box or in a cage or something like that. And I said, well, just do what your body wants to do. And she, ah! like that. And she like broke out of this cage. And I said, okay, now keep going with that, but not with the cage, just follow that. And she was like walking around the room and like, ah! and she had so much energy and power and so much aliveness that wasn't expressing itself or known when she's just like in her anxiety. And it was just such a transformational experience to like have that realization that embedded in this thing that 
makes her life smaller and smaller is the seed of something that is helping her to get bigger. Yeah, it's not, see, that's a really lovely illustration. Um, and I really, yeah, it seems to be like how the, the con containment that her holding in this tremor, it was just leaking out. And then by inviting her to, to really kind of go with that and to allow it and, um, and then to, as you say, observe it, to kind of track it yourself and invite experimentation with that. Yeah. And she's getting in touch with the blocks and then the, the as you say, the, the, the anger, the rage. And you're, and you're all the time welcoming that yes. and witnessing it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, 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 and then, of course, you, right, you mentioned blocks, right? So then, of course, there's another aspect of the work, which is, okay, what is blocking you? right and and then that can have to do with childhood stuff or it can have to do with her own belief systems or whatever right so there is a part for also is it's it's not just about the movement stuff but it it, it it's all happening in the moment yeah and what i what i'm thinking up there is what sometimes is called i've heard called linking linking what's happening, the blocks or whatever is happening in the moment is getting linked back to perhaps earlier experience, traumatic stuff, childhood experience. Is that what we're kind of talking about there? That's right. That's yeah. right. That Maybe. Kind of emerges that, that's right. If that is what's happening, right? Mm -hmm. If, if, if she's interested in the blocks, right? I, I can, I can, I'm, I'm not remembering what happened with her in that moment, but I know with some clients, uh, I, I start to go, I, if, if, if I, uh, I, I might be interested in, in what, how that's connected to childhood or something like that or trauma, but they might be interested in, no, I want to know like how I can, like, where am I going? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, which, which is also something from Jung, right? Jung, uh, was interested in, uh, the final cause, right? This it's an idea from Aristotle, right? That 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 there's the material cause, like like here's the material cause. This is going in this direction because this banged into it, right? Uh, but then there's also the final cause. This is going in this direction because it's leading us somewhere, right? So where is that trying to lead me? That's a very important question. Both of those questions. What what caused it, but also what's the cause the, the, where it's where it's leading me is also super interesting. Yeah, wow. Yeah, that's really it's a really nice sort of um, decision point. Maybe do you find yourself sometimes with a client and kind of you're kind of maybe wondering with them, do they want to look, look back or do they want to look forward? Do you find that sometimes with a client? Or? I love that that you say wondering with them. I think that's so, such a beautiful way that you said that because uh, it's not my decision. I, I may have an, I may have a thought about that decision, but it's definitely got to be a co-created decision. And part of my thinking about it might be so. In, in process work, we're interested in uh, like kind of who am I normally? Who do I think of myself as? What do I normally do? And then what's trying to happen? So, so for instance, if somebody's constantly looking back at their lives, but isn't kind of, where is this leading me? Then I might think, oh, maybe a growth edge would be, let's look in this direction instead of back this time. Now that may meet resistance uh which 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 is also fine I, I and i and i may choose okay let's look back again or i may say oh i wonder what that resistance is to look forward right um whereas somebody else is like constantly looking forward and never wants to look at their childhood um and there's also really smart reasons for that right and we 
you know, as, as, as you know, from trauma work, we don't have to know what happened then in order to work with it, right? The body keeps the score, right? As van der Kolk says. And, and, and so, yeah, there's, there's, uh, yeah. Anyway, I'm okay, got off on a tangent there. No, it's great because we're seeing different aspects of how you work here. Um, and it, it, I think it was, it, you, you mentioned it at the start about that our experience of the present also takes into account our experience of imagined futures, um, maybe, you know, hijacked possibilities, what, what's the block there, and also imagined or remembered or half remembered or, or thought about past experiences. So it's all, it's all in the experience of the present in a way. Yes, I mean, I know this much more these days now that I'm meditating regularly and, 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 and notice how often I can be sitting here on this chair and uh, be in some experience from years ago or days ago or be in some experience of, of, of oh yes, what, how is that going to go? And I don't know that I'm here on this chair thinking about that. I just experience myself as being there. My body is there. My mind is there. I'm seeing it's a full spectrum experience that I'm having. And then I realize, oh, wait a minute, I'm meditating. You know, and, and it's, it's like what Chuang Tzu said, you know, am, am, am I? That's Chuang what I was thinking about. Who, who, who dreams I'm a butterfly or am I a butterfly dreaming that I'm Chuang Tzu? And, yeah. and, and, and in process work, one way that we can think about it is those realities are happening at the same time. All of that is happening now, co-emerging. So in process work, we talk about this, this idea that there's one aspect of reality is consensus reality. Right, so if I have a body symptom, um, that can be measured, right? You can measure my blood pressure, right? Oh yes, you have high blood pressure. But then I also have my own subjective experience of high blood pressure. I don't have high blood pressure, thankfully, but, but that might be different than somebody else's experience of high blood pressure. And that's what we call the dreaming level of reality, right? Because there's just my own subjective experiences, my own thing, right? So another example is I'm a man, I'm a white guy, right? I'm cisgendered and I'm, and I'm straight. Uh, and yet I have dreamed that I am a black lesbian woman preacher living in the woods. Now, that's the dreaming level, right? In consensus reality, that is not true. And I have all the privileges of being a white man and I'm not gonna be treated like a black person, like a woman, like a queer person. Um, so, and yet this other experience is still somehow inside of me. So that's happening with all of these things, right? I, that, that guy has anxiety and it is making a measurable tremor in him. And yet his experience, that, I'm sorry, that, 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 that woman, I was just thinking of somebody else, right? Uh, but, 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 but that, but that, uh, but, but, but her experience of that and where that leads is, is just in the dreaming. Yeah, I really, I really like this, um, this, this contrast uh, between like what you're saying there, consensus reality, what we, what we think of perhaps often as science and measurement, and we get together and we agree what, what is real. <laughs> but then everybody has their own individual experience, which can be really wild and really, really, <laughs> yeah, and very unique and can take us in amazing directions. And that's that's as real to us individually as the consensus reality, I, I, would, I would imagine, would you would you say? Absolutely, it, it, it is part of reality, right? That, that's, that, 
that 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 that's still that that is part of what's happening, right? In process work, we're interested in what's happening. However, in, in all these in these different ways, and, and I just want to say there's another aspect of reality that we talk about in 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 process work, which is the essence level, right? And and that's the level out of which these different realities emerge. Um, so for instance, yeah, so, so, so this, so this woman, for instance, was like that, right? Um, but I don't remember if we did this or not, but to go to the essence level, we could have, okay, now experience that same thing, but just inside of you, experience it in your cells, just make it really slow and just mm, and what's that what's the essence of that and that can be a really powerful way of working as well right okay yeah great so um i can tell that you're very enthusiastic um about your way of working that's pretty obvious <laughs> what do you what do you really enjoy or what like what's 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 really rewarding or enjoyable about this way of working uh, lane would you say For me, it's a way of working, but it's also a spiritual path for me because um, I'm constantly in awe of the mystery right when you see somebody like this right it just seems like somebody like this and there's a mystery behind that that who knows where that's gonna go who knows what's behind that where all the different possible permutations of that and i just i'm constantly either feeling or actually literally after a session like bowing down on the ground to like whatever it is that creates that what is that i don't know what that is but but that that's that's probably the most rewarding thing for me is is just that sense of having a taste in myself, with other people, in groups, in communities, having a taste of the veil opens and something else expresses itself. And that, that's just, and, and also I, I feel that that's something that's incredibly healing for clients. Um, that they have a sense, it's, it's not just me in my own kind of little life. It's like a connection to something bigger that is moving us. Okay, yeah. So I, I, I kind of want to ask you, when you're experiencing this sense of wonder, Lane, and you're you're in connection with your client, you're the person you're working with. What, what's what what do you think is the experiential side of the relationship? I mean, because you know that's something that is very important. Often in experiential ways of working, the the, the experience of what's happening between you and the person you're working with. Do you have a sense of of how that can be for you? And um, what like what might be going on in terms of that sometimes? Mm. That's a big, that's a big spot where the mystery shows itself. That's right. Um, uh, one of one of one of the things that Arnie Mandel has said to me many times, and now I just hear it all the time in my head, and I say it all the time to my students, um, is how is the dream happening in the moment? Right? So the dream is whatever the pattern is that's there. 
how is that happening in the moment? So, so I don't know why I keep talking about this, this, this woman who, who, who was like this and then like this, right? So how is that happening between us? How might I be, without knowing it, constraining her in a box, thinking about her in a certain way? Or how might I be colluding with her to stay in her box? Or how might I be wanting to help her get out of her box and she wants to stay in there because it's scary out there, right? So then that's in the relationship, right? The dream is happening in the moment. It's not just happening inside of her. It's happening with, in, in the relationship between us. And so making that, uh, making that more clear. Process work is really an awareness practice. Something's happening. Let's bring awareness to it, right? So, so it, I mean that. I, not, I'm, I'm talking about that 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 woman there, but that's not. I, I'm not remembering that happening in that situation. But, um, but that often does come up. That there's something. Here we are between us. And uh, yeah, I remember this 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 one client, and 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 he had a lot of um, trauma, and I was interested in working on that trauma, or work. I, I you know I I I've also studied some uh, sensory motor psychotherapy because I was really interested in how they work with trauma. They do amazing work with trauma um, and uh, it fits together beautifully with process work and and while I was in that training program like you know when, when when you're in the middle of learning something everything looks like what you're learning right so I really wanted to help this guy work with the trauma but he wasn't interested in that right so so we were there we were in relationship and and it, it, I mean, to use the metaphor from that, from that woman's work, he felt like I was keeping him in a box, that, that I was seeing him as a trauma survivor. And he didn't want that. That's not what he was interested in. So we worked on that a lot in our relationship, and that was really, really valuable. Yeah, that's, this is exactly the kind of, Thing I'm, I'm interested in, in, in at this point is you know how do you how do you work with the client with the other person in terms of your own process like your own experience because you were saying there you became aware that you were seeing this 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 person as a trauma survivor and you were you, you know obviously you know to, to, to help right but he's experiencing you experiencing him that way or thinking about him that way as somehow that was getting in the way of something. So I, I'm just curious, could you say more about like, maybe as an example of somewhere where it was a little bit tricky to work experientially in terms of what was arising, like how did you, how did you actually kind of work through that then with that client? Could you say that? Yes, more? that was tricky. That was tricky because, um, The first thing that I did was to become defensive. I'm not proud of that, but but it's true. No, no, I don't just see you as a trauma survivor. And no, no, and I'm just, you know. And then another way my defensiveness showed up was, yeah, but what I'm learning about is this and this and this, and I feel like you're stuck and blah, blah, blah. And, right? That didn't go over very well. <laughs> And so what ended up going best was me being real. Um, and this is something that is important, I feel. I, I know that 
there's the blank screen idea, um, but uh, and I feel that there's in, things that are important about that. But but sometimes when it's about the relationship, then the way to work with that is to show up as yourself in the relationship. What what is my experience? is an important part of our experience. Um, and uh, so I talked about also my own pushiness. And I was able to own my pushiness with this person. Uh, I also talked about my own insecurities that I wasn't sure where he wanted to go. I wasn't sure how to get him in this particular situation to where he wanted to go. And I was falling back on these tools because I was hoping that that was going to help. And when I was more vulnerable like that, that was actually what he was looking for. He wanted um, a person-to-person. -person. Here we are. It's 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 not you know something and I don't. You're going to help me, but it's well we're both humans, and here let's work with this humanity together. Now that doesn't mean. Now we're going to go out for a beer after the session, right? It doesn't mean now I don't still have this role as a therapist, right? Because this person still wanted my assistance. But using my awareness in that moment of what's happening here, what's happening there, how is that and what's trying to happen, what was trying to happen was that this person was trying to have an experience of being an actual human being. And actually, this person ended up being actually amazing, de developed actually a way of working with others that was based on this kind of human-to-human -human contact. Which, which, which was amazing, actually. So this whole thing was trying to happen in this, per again, it's like, what's trying to happen? What's emerging? And what was stopping that, we could say what was stopping that emergence was me and the relationship, or we could say what was helping that emergence to become more clear was that person saying to me, wait a minute, this isn't working the way it's being. Let's do it in a different way. And then this whole other way emerged for this person. That sounds wonderful. That sounds wonderful, Lane. It sounds like you really, you really got it, got, got in there and got it, got it right with that client, I have to say. Um, it took a while, I have to say. It, 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 that, was, that, was, that was not easy. That was tricky over time. And I got a lot of supervision about that. Yeah, but it's, it's an interesting because this kind of goes back to something we said earlier, like sometimes we observe maybe an interruption or a block in the client, like that client who was trying to, you know, kind of open up to what was happening inside, but they were getting blocked. And you were observing that, but actually it was you observing your own perhaps blocks and your client, your the person you're working with, kind of letting you know that as well. And you being open to, to where that had to shift, perhaps. Would that be fair to say, do you think? Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Which, which, which I know for some therapists feels like a loss of power or feels like uh, sharing too much. Um, but for me personally, I'm less interested in my power than I am in what's trying to happen. And, you know, back, back, back when I was a much younger therapist, uh, I, I would maybe overshare about stuff like that. So I'm, I'm very judicious now or discerning about when that happens, but because um, not everything has to be shared. Yeah, no, it sounds, it sounds wise to, 
to use that kind of um, that self-awareness judiciously, like you say. Um, and that, that I think that comes with experience. Um, but it sounds like you really- and Mistakes. <laughs> yeah, of course, <laughs> mistakes too, yeah. Yeah. So do you think that that work with that client shaped your work in terms of the the kind of the relational way of working going after that? Do you think that kind of shaped how you worked after that client with other clients then? I think I think that was part of my growth process. Yes. Mm. Yes, I think I think that that and 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 it also shaped uh, how I worked with trauma and how I how I wove together the, the sensory motor work with process work um, because I at, at that point I, I was I was still learning that trauma work and I and I was uh, kind of clunky with it it's like okay I've got this toolkit no now this toolkit is needed and and so um, yeah but it, but it also did as you're saying shape um, I, 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 I think an ongoing process of humility uh, you know there, there there's there's a there there's a way that um, from from this position there can be a kind of arrogance. I know what's happening. I see what's ha I have this. It's embarrassing to talk about it, but um, and maybe it's just me. Uh, but uh, and oh, look at what I did! Wow, this person had this incredible experience. You know, now now that person has a relationship, and they didn't be look at what I did and. And, you know, what I was talking about before about bowing down, right? That's again, part of that humility. It's like, I'm not doing anything. I'm, I'm bringing awareness to what is, and that awareness is midwifing this process that's trying to be born. And it's just started raining here. I'm not sure if, it, can you hear that? I don't hear it, no. Oh, good, yeah, maybe it's not picking up on the microphone. Um, what I'm really struck by there, Lane, is you becoming aware of your own process as it unfolded, as, as, a, as somebody who works, you know, in this way with clients to help them, because, of course, we can focus on, well, what, what you know, techniques or tools or ways of working can I bring to, you know, help this person to expand their awareness, to help them to, you know, become maybe you know, have a broader experience, you know, integrate pieces that need to be integrated. But then equally, how important it is to become aware of our own process and our own kind of like, what is our own final cause either overall or with this client, you know, what's our own sort of the, the our own baggage, like our own hangups, our own kind of wanting to be the good therapist, I guess, right? Is the, the, yeah. the kind of the effective, helpful therapist is right. all these these processes that happen within us as the person working with the, the client, I guess. Right. Would you say, you know, that that's something that you've been kind of growing in over the years as well, that kind of witnessing your own experiential process? Absolutely. Absolutely. And 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 when when I think about it, it, it makes me think of my childhood dream. Um, in process work, uh, we work a lot with um, the dreams that people had as children, uh, and we see um, that those dreams uh, point to a life myth or a basic a basic dynamic in our lives uh, that happens over and over over time uh, and so in my in my childhood dream it, it's kind of funny but it wasn't at the time uh, I'm in this theater and uh, I have to go pee and uh, and I have to crawl out underneath 
my parents' legs and go to the bathroom and I'm wearing my slippers. And sorry, I won't go into all of the details. I'm sorry, but I, I go I, I, I go into the bathroom and there's this huge shoe shine machine. And I push the button on the shoe shine machine and it tries to eat me. And I've worked on this dream so many times and I won't go into all the details, obviously. Uh, but there's something about what you said and, and connected with this kind of humility that I would, and arrogance that I was talking about, that, that this sense of, okay, I have to shine my shoes, right? I, I have to be shiny. I have to be good. I have to show myself. People have to see me like in a theater, right? Here I am. Right and 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 the shoe shine machine is, in a way, eats me. Right, which is which is a sad thing, really. On the other side of that, when I get eaten by the shoe shine machine, in a way, I disappear. Or, or I'm shined down so much, right? It's like uh, you're rubbed so much you become smooth. Uh, and so I feel that this is a gradual process over time for me. This uh, shining down my rough edges and being less and less myself and more and more uh, what's what's the word for that when the wind can just blow through something uh, yeah such a rich dream and um, lane and uh, makes me think of some some of my own childhood dreams um, that I might share on another occasion. But you know, like so much symbolism in in the theater, and you know, you're small, you, you can fit underneath your parents' legs, and the shoe shine machine, and what that could mean. I'm sure, you know, I can I can see why you you'd have worked on that dream many times. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And and shoe shine machine. There's a shh. Don't talk about that abuse. Shh is also in that. Yeah. I mean, there's so many different layers to things. Yeah. This is this is the beauty of dreams and the beauty of of as 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 we've been talking about that that every moment we're dreaming, there's so many different things going on. And and so that also makes me just bow. Yeah, so that kind of creates that sense of awe that's actually really, really nurturing by the sounds yeah. of it. Yeah. Yes. And, for you and, and for the, your, your clients, I'm sure. Yeah. Yes, that's that I was going to say that, that, that um, I think one of the most beautiful things we can give our clients is that sense of wonderment, as you called it, wonder. Like what's wow? Instead of uh, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah. Yeah, lovely. So we're coming towards the end of the interview, um, Lane. And I was wondering, you know, thinking of colleagues, uh, other people who work with clients with these kinds of you know difficulties, maybe you know trauma and and so forth, needing a, you know to grow personally. What would you say to someone watching this interview around these ways of working, like what, what would you share today around like, you know, the, the kind of the benefits of the richness of this way of working? Be, before I answer that, I have to say, I, I, I was distracted from really hearing the question because I was um, laughing at myself uh, because, uh, because I, I don't want to give the impression that 
I'm like all ground down without any pokey edges because just ask my kids. Uh, so it, it, it's a process. I just wanted to say, um, it's, it's not that now I'm humble, you know, that would, that, 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 that itself would be just so arrogant. So, oh yeah. No, listen, anyway, I, I, I just wanted to say that because, because yeah. you know, I was laughing at myself. So now, oh, listen, now please ask the question again. Sorry. No, look, I mean, uh, you and me both, I mean, the day that I wake up thinking I've got it figured out, I know I'm in trouble. Cause so I'm going to get a real kick in the ass that day. You know? <laughs> so, right. So, you know, you and me both. So, yeah. So just, you know, I suppose the question, like probably, you know, one of the, the last questions today, Lane, is just in terms of colleagues, other people who work with clients with these kinds of, you know, issues and, and challenges. What, what would you like to share today about this, these ways of working that we're talking about today that you might, you might like to, you know, highlight? it's what what's coming up is that the moment will point to the intervention the moment will point to the unfolding go going at it as okay this is a that means i need intervention 33 um, for me I, I think I think there's something important about having that those constructs inside of us and yet it misses the humility that something is trying to happen mm -hmm. So for me, it, 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 it comes back to the, tr it, it comes back to trust. It comes back to trust, trust in the process, trust that something's trying to happen and that something will show itself. And that our job is not to manipulate that, but to midwife it, not to create something, but to allow something and that often awareness just bringing awareness to something is is itself um you know if 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 i'm if 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 i'm going like this but i don't notice i'm going like this and then you say lane i noticed something happened with you with your shoulders like oh Right? And then it happened more and more slowly, and then we can unfold that. Right? It doesn't have to be do that again, or you know, it's it's, it's just a touch, and then notice what happens out of that. That is beautiful, actually. I love the way you you began with the moment. It's it 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 gives us the the clue, or it 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 points us into what what the intervention for want of a better word what 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 we could add that you know there's all these scaffoldings we have as therapists all these resources like you know processes and procedures do do one two three then check you know and then maybe which is great which so is great and we need those we need those yes. right yeah but then just to kind of use those as a resource rather than a sort of uh, prescription i guess is kind of maybe what you're saying beautiful mm. okay so <laughs> i have so enjoyed chatting with you yeah guys. likewise oh. likewise yeah it's very very rich um so look i mean you know any last you know thoughts reflections about this experience maybe today or you know how this has been i just so appreciate the back and forth and 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 the as we've been talking about a co-creation i feel like there's been a real co-creation and i've i've really appreciated you sharing your experience with these things and and uh yeah for 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 me for me uh working with people is is such an improvisation 
and I feel like we've been improvising together. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, and you know, my training has been like in gestalt therapy and internal family systems, a lot of experiential ways of working. So, you know, I, I love this, this way of connecting with you and exploring this and our experience as people and as people who work with others to help them. So I'm really grateful and it's, 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 it's a real pleasure, Lane. So thank you so much. Thank you. And I'd love to hear those dreams sometime. I, we'll have to we'll have to do a follow up, and I will. Let's do that. I will share. I will share, and then there might be some interesting um, overlap with your with your dreams. So we'll, we'll we'll have to we'll have to talk about that and put that together. Maybe sometime in the new year. Which if if you'd be up for that, I'd love to. I'd love. Great, it. nice one. Okay. Okay, that's it. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Enjoy thank you so much for for today and for sharing all of this. So big pleasure. 